everyone. Appreciate you tuning into this episode of the Wolves Den. I uh, got another guest on this episode, uh, Jack Singleton. Um, so today we're just going to go over a little bit of things regarding mindset. Um, obviously what it takes to get to certain levels in life, what it takes to break through certain plateaus. Uh, Jack has a very extensive background in developing his mindset through his hobby um, or soon to be a career, bodybuilding, um, or I guess you could, I'll, I'll let him him say that, but uh, definitely could be a career for him right now or in the works, but uh, I'll let Jack introduce himself and it's a pleasure to have you on. Yep. Thanks, Marcus. So, yep, I'm Jack Singleton. Um, currently, I'm a master's student. I did my bachelor's in neuroscience and biology, and my master's currently is a master's of business and science in drug development. Um, but outside of my educational background, which does help within this field, is my bodybuilding career, which technically right now I'm still an amateur bodybuilder, but the goal eventually is to become an IFBB pro or professional bodybuilder, and that's what I'll be going for in the next couple of weeks. So okay. we'll awesome. see where that's headed. Awesome. Uh, so ex- a little bit of background before we dive mm-hmm. into uh, the real nitty gritty details of the mindset that we want to yep. talk about right now. Um, explain to me your background in the bodybuilding, because I know that's really yep. where this mindset developed that got you to where you are today. So I basically started back in high school where it's just your casual weightlifting, going to the high school weight room, um, and that slowly became, you know, something to enjoy every single day, and then it eventually became to this, you know, you want to learn how to be a better lifter, how to um, maximize, your, maximize your diet, and that's where I started to get into, like, the whole YouTube fad back yeah. in, you know, the high school, college era where I started to take notes on different bodybuilders, how they were training, um, what their diet was like. And that's where I really started to speed things up where I ended up doing my first show when I was 19 years old in a tested natural competition. Um, and that was when I first realized this is something that I wanted to do, mm-hmm. what I love to do. So that was kind of the start of it. College, it got a lot more serious. And then out of college, um, 23 years old, I did my first MPC level show. And I'll be doing my second NPC show in a couple weeks. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so I know Jack and I have a little bit of history, how we know mm-hmm. each other. We grew up, went to high school together. Uh, when when I was in the gym before I started this this business, Golden Wolf, um, I, I was a very avid gym goer, weightlifter. So Jim, Jack and I actually used to work out quite a bit. So, um, I mean, I could just get the sense for where he was headed in his path and his career of bodybuilding. And he, he's the one that continued it. I sort of took a little bit of a different path, but obviously everyone has their own path in life, really. Um, so, I mean, I guess we could sort of dive into this right now. Mentality really separates uh, the good from the great and really gets you to where you want to be in life, especially Nowadays, uh, a lot of people are complacent. A lot of people, I mean, there's this statistics that show everyone has been um, the most depressed out of any single generation, the most anxiety. H- how have you been able to really separate yourself um, from others with your work, work ethic and mindset, really? So I think it starts with you have to have a passion for what you do. And I think a lot of people struggle with what exactly do they enjoy and see a future within? Because if you don't see an end goal to something, you're never going to be able to visualize getting to that point. Like a lot of people are just like, oh, I'm going to work my job um, and just get that paycheck to paycheck. And they don't really have like this end goal of like, okay, this is where I see myself in 10 or 15 years. Um, So personally for me, that's one way that I want to make sure that I am successful. I have a long-term and short-term goals laid out. So you have, what do I want to accomplish in the next few weeks, next few months? And then you have, what I, what do I want to accomplish in the next few years? And I feel like a lot of people don't set those goals or write them down. So that's one thing that, that I think has been really helpful for me. And the other thing is when I am doing the workouts, um, especially with bodybuilding, and even when it comes to my, my uh, educational career, it's like, if I'm working this hard, someone out there is also working equally as yeah. hard. Um, so you want to outwork them. You want to you want to think of that competitive mindset, not just within sports or whatever, but within where you want to be passionate, where you want mm-hmm. to be successful. At. Yeah. Uh, sort of a question. I know this is something a little off script, but mm-hmm. how do you compete with yourself? Compete know, with yourself. I know that you brought up you're you're competing with someone who's who you're trying to chase yeah. or trying to catch up with you. 
but how do you really compete with yourself? Because that's really your biggest competitor. Yeah, and I think it's seeing like where you are currently. Like what 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 do I in terms of bodybuilding? How we see it is like how I think about it is like okay, this is my physique currently. This is the physique I want to be at. How do I improve on that each and every day? And it's like that's where the, you know you got to be strict with your diet, strict with your training, uh, strict with even things like your sleep, and yeah. and making sure you're on top of those things. I think a lot of times it's not the things that externally motivate us that really push us further, but what internally motivates us, and that's where I talk. Like I think about yeah. your goals and like your success and like your future. Like I want to be this type of person for my wife and kids down the road and Mm -hmm. like this is the time of where you can develop that so when it comes to yourself I guess having that you know I see myself here this is where I want to be that's how you be competitive with yourself as well okay in terms of work ethic um and I, I kind of talked about my goal setting. Yeah. And, and you've come from, you know, Celiano landscaping to Golden Wolf landscaping. How have you been able to kind of have that, that vision of where you want to be and where do you see yourself going? Like, how have you been able to maintain the success of this business so far? So uh, it really all started back to what you were saying with mm. a vision, with a goal. Obviously, when you, it's like a kid on Christmas, right? When you uh, have the excitement and you just want to, can't wait to get up and go to the Christmas tree. You, you could say the same thing, right? When you have that vision, you just can't wait to get up and go go, go, go out and tackle your goal. Yep. Um, so it really all started with that, that dream and that vision of what it could be for me. I mean, that all went back to, um, I, I forget even what year it was. I probably, for round numbers, just say two to three years ago. Yeah. Um, I went to my mentors, I have a business coach and mentor, Brad Stevenson from Newcastle Lawn and Landscape. I took a tour of his shop, a multi-million dollar landscape company out in Pennsylvania, uh, with a cold call one day, I just happened to reach out and say, Hey, do you mind if I just meet with your owner? And then he was nice enough to bring me in for a day and that ended up sparking a relationship. So that initial visit really was like, I was like a kid in a candy store. That's really when that goal started to come, uh, or my work ethic of what I have been doing in selling and landscaping really started to portray into a professional um, company and then what I could really make this into. So going back to your question um, is having that vision about what I could make something over time and having that far-fetched goal. Yeah, it's, it took them 25 years to develop a multi-million dollar business, but it's what do you have to do today? What do you have to do tomorrow? What do you have to do the next day to accomplish that? Nothing nothing good happens overnight. And it's the ability to have that delayed gratification that today may suck, tomorrow may suck, but in 5, 10, 15 years, then you can maybe relax a little bit. Then you could have that or a portion of that goal or a majority of that goal that you really are striving towards. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the thing that really started me in this business is obviously the big flashy building, the big flashy um, trucks and the new equipment and what, uh, I mean, who, who doesn't like that? Yeah. Um, but it, it's really started all with that vision and trying to make it my own at the end of the day. Yeah. And I, I liked your point of, it's like a kid of kid in a candy shop. And the first time you go in, <laughs> Uh, and, and see someone who has the goal you want, you're excited and you want to get into it. But then you're going to have the days where yeah. th- this, this shit sucks. Like this, and, and that's kind of what I want to hear. You, I'm curious to what you think is like, how do you get through those days when it does suck, when you want to give up, when you want to quit? Like what do you do in those moments that keeps you pushing towards where you want to be? Uh, I mean, I could... I could be 100% transparent with you. Today mm-hmm. was one of those days. Yeah. Today was a day where the phone wouldn't stop ringing. Mm-hmm. Things were happening out in the field with clients. A uh, client was disappointed. A client was um, complaining about payment schedules and, and whatnot. But uh, at the end of the day, I know that there's going to be, in the beginning phases, there's going to be more bad days than good days. But you, you need to be able to create a strong foundation through, I know I brought this up when, with my interview um, with David Kurzrock a couple uh, episodes ago, but being able to sort of callous your mind. I know David mm-hmm. Goggins, not to be stereotypical, um, but he, he is the one that sort of ingrained that into my head because you just need to constantly repetitively go through things to say, you know what? Yeah, a client's upset. Yeah, you know what? 
uh, a truck broke down. You know what? We lost a couple grand on this job, but it's okay. Yeah. It, it really is okay. In the grand scheme of things, uh, if you don't learn from those mistakes, if you don't improve on those things, then yeah, of course, then it's going to be a big deal and you're, you're constantly going to be repeating those until it's really going to hurt you. Um, so what gets me going every single day is, I mean, I, I wake up at four o'clock every single morning. Some people think I'm crazy. Some people think it's, it's what you have to do, but I enjoy getting up every single morning because I, I go back to myself two to three years ago, whatever exact date that was when I walked into Newcastle and I say one day that could be mine. Mm -hmm. And it's, just about doing what I have to do today and focusing on that, putting all my energy into it and being able to learn from it really because through the course of life, through the course of hitting your dreams and goals, it it's going to take uh, repetition. It's going to take failure. It's going to take um, the type of person who's wow. relentless yeah. to get through those obstacles. Yeah. And I mean, for, for yourself, I gather you have the same day or same types of things, whether it be in the gym where you don't want to go to the gym one day, mm -hmm. you feel weak, you feel um, like, like there's someone out there that, or there's a guy standing next to you in the gym that may look better than you that yeah. day. Um, you don't want to, your diet sucks mm -hmm. or something like that. I mean, how, how would you say that sort of reflects in your, your life? Yeah. So, I mean, I think the biggest thing in terms of like on this topic is when you have, when you're going through the day and you have such a busy schedule as someone who is an amateur bodybuilder and you're trying to become a pro, you can't just devote your life to bodybuilding. Yeah. You have to have a life, you have to have income um, to support your dream. And when, you know, you have the days where it's work, cardio, work, cardio, gym, and then you finally get the break and even so as a student as well mm -hmm. you you rarely have the breaks or the energy to to go through your whole your whole day yeah um so i think i have that end goal of being a pro bodybuilder so it's like to me i never have in terms of the gym and cardio it's never like oh i should cut back on this day because i'm a little tired or i'm exhausted I would like and i think that's part of the extreme of bodybuilding is that you'll push your body to the point of where it's basically breaking down in order to reach your goals because you're so driven and motivated to get to that point. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if that's a, a mental thing or if it's a, a good mental thing or a bad mental thing, but I think bodybuilders like to take it to the extreme where yeah. we're going to do anything. It doesn't matter what the rest of life is going to is going to lead to, mm -hmm. but to get to where I want to be in this shape, in this size, I'm going to do whatever it takes, mm -hmm. whatever time I need to do, whether it's, 60 minutes cardio in the morning, 60 minutes after my workout, including my workout, I'm going to get it done. And mm -hmm. a lot of those times it's on low food, uh, you're exhausted, you're not getting a lot of sleep, and that's just part of yeah. the lifestyle. And if you don't like it, you don't have to do it. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's as simple as that. Um, and I, and I, to transition this, I think one of the things that's similar to bodybuilding, same with owning a business, is reflect, reflect the importance of reflection, of like where – where did I come from? What was my progress within the last couple mm -hmm. of years? And where do I see this heading? Because if you don't look back on where you were, it's very hard to see the direction in which you're going. Correct. Um, and I think that's why, as a business owner, that's one mm -hmm. of the most important things to do and why in so much of business we have these reflection plans of, okay, did I meet all my goals for the year? Mm -hmm. um, and I know that's probably something that is yeah. very important to you as well. Of course. I mean, going with the whole goal setting and uh, how we need to reflect, whether it be on a, a weekly, a daily, a monthly, mm -hmm. quarterly, um, yearly basis, it, it really all starts with the planning phase because you can't analyze certain tangibles without having uh, something to measure it against. Mm -hmm. So it all starts in the planning phase, sort of that goal setting, um, whether it be a, a long-term vision of having um, XYZ dollars, employees, um, crews, uh, trucks, or having a, a nearsighted goal saying for the next quarter, this is what we want to accomplish together. So in order to harness um, something that we could refer back to and something that we could also reflect on, it's first setting those goals in place. Um, or setting those tangibles, those benchmarks, I guess you can call it. Uh, same thing goes with you setting, hey, uh, by this date, I want to be this weight. By this date, I yep. want to be lifting this amount of weight. Exactly, yep. Or by this date, I, I want to 
um, have this percent body fat, that, that type of stuff, and then you can measure it on a weekly, a daily basis. Um, anything that you put out there, anything that doesn't, that isn't um, measured will never be improved. So whether it be on a personal basis, whether it be in a business basis, whether it be in a career basis, mm-hmm. um, if you just have things spread unorganized and just say wh- wherever it ends up being, it'll, it'll go, th- that's no way to track your progress and hit those goal f- goals faster because then you could just be either underworking yourself or not working in the most efficient way. Yeah. Um, so it, it all starts in, in a business mindset, in a business aspect. Uh, we do set a budget for the year, so coming into, uh, and we look at it as an active budget, so coming into the year, coming into the January or February, we set that budget for, um, the real big thing of the budget is one, to, to plot our finances for the year, because finances is, or sales and, and dollars is the, really the oxygen of the business, and if we can't have a roadmap of where we need to be to hit our goals for the year, then there's no way we could backtrack track that on every single job, every single man hour, every single crew hour, every single sale, every single lead, um, and on all that. So developing that budget and having an active working budget throughout the entire year um, and changing it on a weekly, a, uh, a, a weekly, a monthly, a quarterly basis to, to uh, account for what may have went right, what may have went wrong, and to make sure that we're still on track to hit that goal with all the ups and downs throughout the year. Um, I, I know there's a cliche, I'm probably going to say it wrong, but uh, when, when you like set your GPS, you you have to constantly check it instead of just driving or like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but like an, an air, uh, a pilot, mm-hmm. you set your GPS and then yeah. you constantly get to check the wind speed, could be pushing you this way. If you're not constantly checking your goals to get you to that point, whether it be and a business, whether it be in bodybuilding, then you're just going to go off track and end up across the other side of the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, But in terms of how you have to reflect and look back on your progress where you were as well as where you're going, how how does that affect you? I think in terms of reflection, it's it's good to, in the bodybuilding sense, it's it's to keep your your confidence as, am am I doing something right? And one of the things that I do is I have... I don't go through a coach. I do all my own coaching. So sometimes that you have to, that reflection part is even more yeah. important. It's like, am I, am I doing this right? Um, especially like something like when you're actually going through the motions of doing a show and going through your peaking, that's where that reflection part is really important because I would say for my last show, the peaking specifically, I was probably about a day off of, of, the, of the appearance, of the vascularity, the dryness, the size that I wanted. Um, that physique that I wanted came a day after on the Sunday where the show was on Saturday. That Sunday is where I had the look that I wanted. Um, and that's part of the learning process and you have to reflect on what did I do for that peak week and how can I improve on it? So that's, you take that and then you improve on it for the next time you do a show. It's like, okay, we take what we did last time, move it a day earlier and hope for that peak to come on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And that's, if, if you're not actively looking and analyzing being critical of of what you're doing then you're never going to improve and yeah. i think in in bodybuilding it's one of the most critical sports of of i mean you're stepping on a stage to be judged for how you look it's going to be <laughs> hypercritical um yeah and you have to be critical on yourself and and your plan and your adjustments and the same thing comes on the coaching side if i don't think like with my with my athletes i want to make sure that what i did what's working for them now it, Mm-hmm. It's working from that for them continuously, and if I need to make changes, I will and reflect on. Okay, did did this type of diet not get the same progress? Um, we need to change that, and not just be a coach who's just giving out plans for, that, for dollars. That, yeah, and that match every like just a one size fit all because nobody is one size fit all. It's mm-hmm. your 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 genetics, your nutrition, your body is all different. So those mm-hmm. those plans never work and I know a lot of coaches that just do that. Yeah. So going back to what you were just saying about mm-hmm. that show where you were a day late. Yeah. How how when, when you woke up that day mm-hmm. and you saw yourself in the mirror and said, "Shit, this should have been me yesterday." Yeah. And then you feel as though you you weren't you didn't bring your best to the table or something mm-hmm. was off. You didn't plan properly. How do you hand a situation like that, and yeah. how do you use that to get you 
to that next step and yeah. motivate you to to propel you forward. And I think that's where it's like, okay, this is what I. That's where when when you wake up the next day and you see that look and you're like, damn, this is this is what the physique needed. that I wanted. This is what yeah, exactly. This is what I needed. That's at that moment you're like, okay, this is what I did these seven days before. Let's write this down, make notes of it, and have have all the numbers correct. So that information doesn't get buried when I'm, you know, bodybuilding shows are a lot of times months and months and months apart. You have to have that stuff written down, notes mm -hmm. of it, so that you can look back on it and be like, okay, this is this is ex the exact protocol that I did last time. How are we going to improve on it? And luckily, and for for this type of of change, you can just move things a day earlier and hope you get the same look. But you mm -hmm. have to make sure you're you're actively tracking you know, your macronutrients for each of those days and making sure you're in, you know, you're loading the same amounts or else basically mm -hmm. that's useless because if you don't know the exact amounts, you're just going to have a different look when you finally get to that point. So how does that separate you versus the person that may not be tracking those key variables or mm -hmm. in terms of a business, how, how can that separate Golden Wolf from yeah. um, not keeping track of that active budget? Like mm -hmm. how... How could that separate both of us versus someone who we may be competing against or someone mm -hmm. who may be out there? Um, how is that? How, how have you been able to use that to really push you forward? I think it helps like make a big difference. Yeah, like helps clean up your losses. Like in terms of a business, what you're trying to do is clean up your mistakes that end up losing you money. And I think with bodybuilding, it's like cleaning up the mistakes that ended up having you deemed off for whatever it was at the show that you didn't come in exactly correct for. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think there's other people that just, you know, they just follow a coach and they willingly do whatever the coach says. But, you know, if you end up switching coaches, you end up moving um, moving on from them, you're not going to know your body as well mm -hmm. if the previous coach worked with you. And, and that's why I think learning your body is so important. But some people don't do that and they're not going to have the advantage of, okay, I know exactly how much I need to intake on these days. Mm -hmm. I know exactly how carb sensitive I am, how much fat, how much protein, how many calories. And that's really what makes you different. So you're trying to cut back on those losses, on mm -hmm. those those issues, those problems that can come up that are going to deem you away. Same thing with the business where it's like we're going to we, – we had these issues where we lost money, we lost time. Now how do we get back mm -hmm. um, – those valuable resources. Yeah, I think a real big thing is for people that may have experienced some failures, whether mm -hmm. it be financially, whether it be stepping on stage and may not getting that look that you're looking for, um, or in the gym and you, you have a, a goal to do to lift a certain amount or to look a certain way or to get a certain weight or to lose a certain amount mm -hmm. of weight and you don't hit that. Um, it's really about what you do next after those things happen exactly. or what you don't do next that really could separate yourself from either continuing on that path of that greater goal or putting you back into that pool of that the average quote unquote mm -hmm. average person that you're trying to really break part of um, and to get to the level of where you're trying to be at to get to the level that I see this business being at um, you, you can't be average by any means um, but I, I mean in terms of being able to harness that power, being able to harness um, what it takes mentally, how have you been able to do that just to sort of break the mold of what society wants you to be? Yeah, I think a lot of times it's like I, one of the biggest insults, I guess you could say, is like to call me or you, you probably agree with this, is to call us average because that's <laughs> just, it's it's, we don't, when you see yourself and you see your future, you don't want to be lumped into the group of average people. You want to stand out. You want to be successful at something. Um, and you want to see, and that's where I think the whole point of having a vision and having a goal is so important because that's where you really set yourself apart from, from everybody else. Mm -hmm. And the complacency is really what ruins people's drive and, and their motion, especially if they're just getting a paycheck. It's like, you can't just be driven by money. You have to be driven by yourself and your 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 goals where you want to be mm -hmm. your vision those things are so important um and that's kind of how i've been able to with 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 myself is like i know where i want to be i know i have and the same thing with the goal setting um but to to get to that point to set yourself from average it, it takes doing all those things together not just you know oh i set this one goal i want to get to it oh i just you know i see myself 
you know, getting to the competitor stage, competing once and then being done. Like, no, you have to have, I want to be an IFBB pro or I want to compete at the professional level. Like that, you need to set long, serious goals that aren't just going to end as soon mm-hmm. as you get to them. Or once you hit a roadblock. Yeah, or once you hit a roadblock. Like you get, and, and a lot, of t- and that's one thing, thankfully, I, I, I feel like it's part of bodybuilding is injuries. And when, when you have mm-hmm. an injury and you have a setback, like how do you, not just be like, okay, I'm done now. Like I, I had my time in the sport. Yeah. Um, and luckily that's not something I've had to seriously deal with, but a lot of people have to. And it's, it's, mm-hmm. is this really what you want to do? Then you're going to take the steps and you're going to take the time to recover and get where you want to be in terms of your physique mm-hmm. and, and the competitive stage. Yeah, of course. Uh, I, I completely understand with what you're saying. It's mm-hmm. definitely, difficult to it's one thing to say this and one thing to do it yeah obviously you you have to be able to go through these things to really understand what it what we mean by this Mm -hmm. um some people can go through it on different levels in life some people can go through it in different extents some more so there's people that have been through more than us there's also been people that have been through less than us so it's obviously we've got to say this with a grain of salt um not saying everyone (laughs) listening to this is average by any means but it's it's comparing uh, who we are as a person and where we want to be to from really where society wants us to yeah. be as as two young men. And I think at heart, no one actually is like you're not genetically average. I don't think. I think it's like you're. It's environmentally like you can do what you want to do. You can mm-hmm. strive to whatever you want to be. It's just, are you gonna settle for average? Like mm-hmm. that's where everyone's average. But mm-hmm. everyone has the capability of not being it. The resources are there. The the time. The drive can be there it's just whether or not you do it Mm -hmm. and as and i'll I'll tie this into the next point which i'm I'm curious how you deal with it um so part of not being average is we're spending so much time on our craft and and what we see as our vision how do you balance your work social life especially with you know working 10 hour days almost every single day and then constantly being on the computer when you're working on the weekends Mm -hmm. how do you have a social life do you do you want a social life like how do you deal with that? It, it has been a struggle for me uh, within the really the past two years, really ever since I started Golden Wolf specifically, because there's there's so much that is unseen that goes mm-hmm. on behind the scenes that you need to do on a daily basis to just keep you above water. And then I personally feel as though if I'm not actively contributing to the business, then I'm either staying stagnant and it's in my eyes stagnancy or staying in uh, complacent is just moving backwards. And that's the last thing I want to do once I've gotten to such a cer- certain point in in a business. So once I get to a certain point, trying to have that personal break, that personal time off or going um, to the beach with my girlfriend or something mm-hmm. – um, we're spending time with my family for holidays. It, it is definitely a, a struggle for me mm-hmm. because it's bad to say, but it's true. My life sort of revolves around the business, especially in the early stages. There, there's no sugar coat around. There's no mm-hmm. easy rich. There's no uh, success overnight. There's people that could definitely have done that before, but they're not going to appreciate it as much for the people that really work that hard for it so trying to find that balance between professional and personal balance i mean it's something recently in the last couple months that i really started to take a little bit more seriously because i started to get run run down i started to get um just overworked and at that point after getting after working so much you can actually do more harm than good same thing goes for working out. You yeah. could work out too much, work out, be in the gym too long, not take the appropriate rest days mm-hmm. to to really build that physique because they're really the rest in, in your yeah. um, career. That's really where it's built. That's yeah. where your um, – I can't, can't think of the word right That's word where right your now. success comes yeah. from. Yeah. yeah, is the rest. And I, I think it's – now talking about it as like business and bodybuilding it's like you always have that anxious background yeah. thoughts of like what's on your mind and when it comes to like bodybuilding nutrition is so important and mm-hmm. that's something that comes in every single day so it's mm-hmm. like 
even when you know if i'm going out with friends like is this if if i'm gonna drink that's gonna inhibit my gains like that's a constant thought am i getting the proper food uh, food in if i'm doing this Mm -hmm. this and this like should i bring my meals should i plan (laughs) that out like these are things as when you are passionate about what you want to do as a business owner as someone who wants to compete professionally your 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 craft is going to be constantly on your mind Mm -hmm. and it's going to affect your social life and i think a lot of people they they enjoy their social life so much that they won't sacrifice the other aspects of their life that would make them more successful hmm. to to accomplish what they want and instead that you know the drinks on the weekend you know Thursday night drinks you know hanging out with your friends football these the, going out watching football these nights of the week like sometimes you have to sacrifice those enjoyable things to to be successful but mm-hmm. uh, but there's also a balance like like you said like you're trying to take more time to um take more time off to to get that little mental break and i I do think that's super important where for bodybuilding where you have that you know 12 week prep where you're on top of everything every meal every session is is exact and then when you're done you have to give your body and your brain like a mental break because if you don't then you're not going to love what you, you might have been hating what you do yeah um but at the same time, if you don't do that, there's there's a proper balance, and it's really hard to find. Yeah, of course. Uh, and something that I personally started to do is I actually got a motorcycle. So okay. being, So being able to just, I mean, I was out yesterday just going for a ride, but just mm-hmm. putting headphones on and just going. I'm an adrenaline junkie. I love just to get the blood flowing and, and enjoy some speed every once in a while. Um, but just have a little bit of fun something that's not sitting behind a desk trying to sell landscape jobs trying to run a business it's really been beneficial for me because my mind just goes and wanders when i'm actually having something fun and it's nice to have a break um a year ago i would not be able to say the same thing and what next year brings who knows uh obviously you just got to take it one day at a time and i've heard it from my family heard it from my girlfriend and nothing wrong they they wanted the best for me but obviously there's a fine line between putting unneeded or unwanted stress and pressure on key relationships and in certain situations of trying to start a business trying to get ready for contest prep um, these are the types of things that the normal person quote unquote normal person won't understand and they don't understand that that end goal, that vision that you have, and that driving factor every single day. So most people won't understand you. Most mm-hmm. people say, oh, why don't you come out and go to get a drink? Why don't you take a day off? Why don't you sleep in today? Why don't we do whatever? I mean, the, the end of the, I mean, the, the uh, things could be endless with what people say, but it's yourself that has to hold you accountable to stay on track. Yeah, and I think there's there's certain people who, who don't get, the anxiety when they get there's there's at least for me and myself i get anxiety about my diet and my training and my nutrition when i'm not doing that stuff Mm -hmm. like on those rest days or those break days are are always kind of the hardest um and like when i'm having like say like a cheat meal or like i'm having a couple drinks with friends on the weekends like in the back of your mind you're like like is this hurting my training is this hurting Mm -hmm. my physique Yeah, yeah yeah same thing with the business it's like you're, you're going to be constantly having those background thoughts when you're really, really yeah. passionate about something because you don't want anything to interrupt that and, and getting to that long-term goal that you see. So mm-hmm. it's, it's constantly going to be developed in your mind and, and, and in your environment. It's like you're tuned to be doing everything you can mm-hmm. to, to be successful. Would, would you say that your work ethic has positively affected your life? Or is there any negative aspect that has come from it? I think there's both. I think it's positive in terms, it's it's grown me to reach my goals and to, and to reach where I want to be. Um, it's developed relationships with people that I probably never would have had previously, mm-hmm. meet people. But negatively, the work ethic kind of hurts in terms of, I would say social life mostly, like is, continue on to that, is like people like you're going to have a smaller group of friends and and people who actually really understand what you do, I think, because you're limiting yourself to, okay, I got to spend this amount of time on, Uh you know, bodybuilding, prep, life, whatever, whereas your social life is going to take that that hit. And that's sometimes that, like, 
like that social life is important to an extent. Um, and I think also mentally draining is like, you're going to tax your body in the long run on losing sleep, um, Mm -hmm. you know, overtraining, uh, certain diet and, and, and drug manipulations. Like that's where the work ethic then becomes almost negative towards your mental and physical health. Hmm. Um, so it's definitely, there's definitely a bit of both, but I think the positives end up outweighing the negatives, which is why they're worth it in the end. So when it comes to decision-making, what are the steps that you take into your business? Um, I'm sure a lot of it's financials, but mm-hmm. a lot of it, and also time, but what do you do um, in terms of your resources and in, in when you when you have a tough decision, like, do I have to like fire this individual or do I have to cut this job or or say something to this client? Mm-hmm. How, how do you deal with those, those situations? The, the first biggest thing is not acting on emotions and just being able to take a step back. Um, I think that should go for everything in life because obviously if your emotions act first, then you may be persuaded or something may come off as you not originally intended to, then actually being able to step step back and think about it. So being able to make calculated decisions, not just spur of the moment decisions. Most of the time, obviously there are gonna have to be spur of the moment decisions that need to be made, but um, for the more important ones, the bigger ones, being able to take a step back and really analyze the situation. And myself, I personally have, uh, depending on the situation, obviously, a core group of people that um, I go to to ask important questions to. Uh, myself, as a business owner, I need to be surrounded by knowledgeable, important people that uh, are experts in their field or has different outlooks on life. So they would be able to better serve the company, better serve myself. And it's a mutual relationship. I provide something for them. They provide something for me. Uh, For example, if it's a financial question, depending on the the extent of it, I would either go to my bookkeeper or accountant to get their professional opinion on it. Obviously, I'm not a CPA or a bookkeeper um, by any means. And being able to have that knowledge and skill that or being able to go to a person with that knowledge and skill that I don't have that's being able to use one of my resources to better myself and the company Um, as well as if it were to be something regarding a client uh, I mean it's something that I had to experience today is there was some client with a tree that was dying after we just installed it some people may think it's not a big deal Um, but to us taking pride in what you do taking everything every small thing very seriously it, it is really going to uh, affect you. I mean, there's a reason I'm talking about it right now is because it, it's affecting me because I take pride in what I do. And it's the last thing that I want to have a client be upset with the service that we provided. But at the same time, there's things that we can only, there's only so many variables that we can control that aren't in our hands. I mean, the same thing goes with you, with, um, with uh, food and competitors and there's, yeah. there's I mean, it, the list is endless. Sicknesses, illnesses mm-hmm. could push you back, injuries. Yeah. Uh, but really when it comes down to making those important decisions, being able to be surrounded by a team similar to yourself, being able to have a coach or, or yeah. someone that you can go to um, to ask those questions, get that opinion, go back and forth a little bit just to make sure it is the best decision because that, that decision could either put you forward 10 steps, keep you in the same place, or put you back 10 steps. Yeah. Um, and the importance of having people surround you, uh, I mean, I personally feel as though I wouldn't be where I am today without having um, people. Yeah. You, you can never do anything. Yeah, yeah, supporting. Um, whether it be a soundboard, whether it be someone with knowledge or information, being able to get you through those tough times, being able to get you through those tough decisions that you have to make, whether it be a good decision or a bad decision, um, but it being able to learn from it either, either way. Um, and that's why relationships in general are, are, are so valuable. And like, you th- I think sometimes we get, we get so, uh, as, as people who are driven and we want to be intrinsically motivated, sometimes we rely too heavily on ourselves when there's people yeah. out there that have the, the knowledge and, and the, the skills that we need to be successful. Yeah. Um, and to, and to get us to that next level, because I don't think anyone really gets to where they are by themselves, even in a sport that's so selfish yeah. as bodybuilding, where you're the only one competing at the end of the day, they're, they're your relationships you have with your friends, your family, um, those at the gym, those in your personal life. And if, if those are off, it's going to affect you mm-hmm. mentally. So not only in terms of a business standpoint, but a mental standpoint, having your relationships be uh, healthy, um, communicated properly, 
those things are so important yeah. for you just being overall prepared to accomplish what you want to do. How, how has social media and technology been able to help you develop those relationships and sort of yeah. make those help you make those decisions without maybe not having someone sitting right next to you yeah. to make that or on the other line or texting? I think that's where, um, yeah, te- technology is, has been, is great for this sport because you can get opinions from people who aren't just at your gym and are, are miles and miles states and states away. I get, you know, guys that I met in college that have so much valuable information. Like one of my best friends, I bounce bodybuilding questions and, and, and talks off of all the time because I want to get his opinion and, and see what he has to say. And getting that from other people so easily and readily available is is amazing and super mm-hmm. super helpful. Same thing with everything you can now post online. I mean, it's so easy to find like a, a, a training routine from your favorite bodybuilder. People post their nutrition, their mm-hmm. full days of eating. Like all this material is, is, is extremely valuable. And if there's something that you want to do or be passionate about, the internet is such a great tool for for starting your mm-hmm. your development on that on that road because basic Google search, basic YouTube search, you're going to find something that mm-hmm. is going to have some value towards what you want to do. And, and that's basically how I started yeah. getting into bodybuilding to same. begin with. I yeah. mean, I could say the exact same thing with yeah. landscaping. Uh, just starting off on my own, yeah, landscaping in the beginning stages, it's not so technical, mm-hmm. but once you start to actually run into business, running multiple crews, getting into hardscape and drain services, I'm not going to lie, I went to YouTube to learn a couple of things mm-hmm. um, before I actually experienced it out on myself. And worked with Newcastle as well as uh, took some courses on those different types of services, but being able to um, go to Google, go to YouTube, there's so much information out there that's free that people take for granted that you don't have to go to college for. You don't have to be um, a, a doctorate or anything like that when it comes down to scientific knowledge of anatomy mm-hmm. and a dietitian and, yeah, and whatnot. Exactly. But I mean, that's really why I started a podcast like this is to, one, give back to the people who may be starting a business, who may have a, a, a different perspective on life, who may need help getting through a certain part of their life, yeah. um, as well as go through or express the challenges that I've personally been through and maybe others throughout this journey of who else I bring on. Um, because I know when I was starting this business, I was actually in, there, in, in that position clueless not knowing what to do and i was the one watching this podcast watching those videos looking things up and it's gotten me to where i am today so i i at least want to be able to help one person yeah Yeah. it's not doesn't have to be thousands of people for millions of dollars that's not really my end goal here my end goal here i really don't have an end goal by any means but being able to have just the ability to help one person being able Mm -hmm. to give someone a different perspective on life and that's why i want to bring people on such as yourself to to give those different opinions that i may not have or or different what what you've been through in your life with what your career brings to the table so that may spark something with someone that i may not have been able to connect with that's why i think bringing people on from different industries different backgrounds really is the uh really is the essential portion of having a podcast like yeah. this to, to touch other people's lives. Yeah, and I think, yeah, technology is, is awesome in that sense where you can really get any piece of information, be able to um, get anything you really want out there to people and, and not make, like you said, not making yourself just segmented to your own industry is is, is extremely valuable because not only do you gain more of a following, but you're, you know, you're having a larger impact on, uh, if that is that your goal, if that's your goal, now you're having a larger impact on mm-hmm. people. Yeah. Um, and I think also it, it helps you build yourself when you can hear the other opinions mm-hmm. of, of, of yeah. other people out there. And the same thing, like you said, myself, I and one of the things I've been trying to do is provide content that I was able to get from YouTube videos and mm-hmm. online, Instagram, whatever. Now I'm kind of trying to tailor the content that I put out to try to be helpful towards people who are mm-hmm. learning and then... Same thing when in and out of the gym, if people are coming up to me, I want to be able to um, be friendly, give them the information they need. Even if I'm tired or exhausted, yeah. I like to be able to help people accomplish what I've, you know, whatever little things I've accomplished <laughs> in my life, I want to be able to help people yeah. do the same. Yeah, of course. Uh, and that's really what it's all about. The rule of reciprocity, yeah. being able to give and not really want 
feel as though you're entitled to get something yeah. when you just constantly want to help, whether it be helping someone work out, improve their fitness, feel better, mm-hmm. feel more confident, help them lose that weight, um, step on stage, become a pro, whatever their goals really are, or myself just maybe being able to help someone get through a, a hump in their life, being able to start a business, being able to hear my failures, being able mm-hmm. to um, avoid certain obstacles and, and to get them to the next point. Um, that's really what it's all about. It, it has to be bigger than yourself in order to get you to that end goal because going back to my point that I said a couple minutes ago, you cannot do what you want to do without the support of people, whether it be someone on the other um, side of the table with you, whether it be someone on the other phone um, or someone on a YouTube video, that the, all those people help contribute to your success. Exactly. Um, but, but speaking of success, for for you, what does it take to be successful? I know that's a big answer. Yeah, I know it's, it's a big, it's a, que- a very open ended question, but uh, I think in it, your eyes, what does it take to be successful? I think it, it ties to a lot, like a lot of things that we've talked about. Where in terms of success is 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 such a general generalized word, it, and we've come to it's almost lost its meaning. Like what mm-hmm. what really is success and success? And to me, it's it's you shouldn't you need to evaluate against yourself. Like if you start to evaluate first against other people, Mm -hmm. the level of success you're trying to measure, it's going to be different for every person. It's going to be different for every business. Um, So to be successful, one of the things to start is, is see where you are now and where, and once again, where you want to be. Um, So to be successful, you need to be able to do your, do what you need to do every single day to reach the goals that you want to do. Um, you need to be able to make sacrifices. That's mm-hmm. that's huge. Um, there's going to be things in your life that you're going to have to spend less time on to not do as much, even if they're fun and enjoyable, to meet what you want to do. Um, you need to be disciplined when and, and, and be able to make actions even when you don't want to do certain things. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's going to be challenges that come at certain points in your career. Um, how do you respond to those challenges? How do you, what decisions are you going to make? How are you going to evaluate those decisions? Being able to see, you know, pros and cons of every decision that comes your way, that's one way you're going to be more and more successful. Um, I think those are four key ways to really, to really evaluate and, and measure your success is, you know, how, how is my decision making? How is my goal planning? How am I doing when adversity hits, and where, like, where do I see myself mm-hmm. in terms of reflection and future? So I know you've been talking about goals a lot. Yeah. How do you track your or track not, not, not track your goals? I'd say how would you start making them? Yeah. Um, because I mean, if you were to, you could just list off goals in the top of your head, yeah. but do you put them down on paper? Do you put them on a board? Do you have a vision board? What What do you do for yourself? Yeah. So for me, I like to take. Um, I like if I have a goal I want to meet, I'm going to write it down. And one of the things I think that's important is you should set time for like some people may may be against this, but you should set time frames for all the goals that you you have. Why would people be against that? I I think because some people may argue that, you know, you your goal might not be achievable within a certain period of time. Who cares if it's not achievable in that time? At least you have a certain period of time you're setting to for yourself that you think you can strive for this and mm-hmm. if it takes too long you adjust that from your experience and, and go from there um but having having something written down that you can refer to like i want to be at x amount by x amount of time that is one way that where you can go back and you can look at that every day and be like am i meeting this goal mm-hmm. having it written down kind of holds you responsible even throw sometimes i'll even throw a reminder in my notes mm-hmm. like are you are you achieving this? Are, are are you reaching the goal that you're setting out to be each and every day? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's something I personally do for myself. I also watch a lot of, as it sounds corny, but a lot of motivational speeches, and especially in the gym too, because it's just you, when you have someone that can can speak to you and and, and say like and kind of relate to the mindset that you're feeling, mm-hmm. kind of drives you to go further. So. Writing your goals down, listening to people who also are, are motivated and successful mm-hmm. and listening to how they got to where they were. That's kind of two active things that I do almost every day to get get to where I want to be. Okay. What about you? What do you do? Um, so w- with myself, 
I mean, at the beginning of every single year, it's something that I've recently started to do. Mm-hmm. Before, I was just sort of winging it, I guess you can call it. Yeah. <laughs> this year, I was sort of a little bit more organized in what I wanted to do and how I wanted to um, track my goals. So, I mean, in my office, I have a, a sheet that I have personal and professional goals. So, um, over the course of the, the next 12 months, I just wanted to been able to... Um, been able to track and see my goals every single day when I came into the office. And after I hit something, I just put a a highlighter through it. And it's something that I see every single day, every single week. So those are really my big personal and professional goals. So with that, it's just sitting down um, at the beginning of the year and being able to have that vision for that, that one year chunk at a time. It could be something that I want to accomplish in the next three months, but it's just something, an entire list. Um, and then every single week and every single Monday, so today, um, I put a to-do list together. And on that to-do list, I have my important tasks for the the entire week. And then I also break it down per day. So even though those things may be more to-dos, those are going to help me accomplish that yeah. greater common goal. So that, that goal, how is that broken down to... Um, tangibles that I could do today because if you have a goal that's just sell a million dollars how are you going to do that yeah that's not clear that's not concise that's that's just so vague I mean you're not just going to wake up one day and sell a million dollars you're not going to wake up one day and look like how you're looking Mm -hmm. sitting across from me on this table absolutely ripped um but what do you have to do today and then reverse engineer that really and also being crystal clear yeah. on what you want to do is huge not just um not just being so vague where you think you can accomplish it but at the same time you don't know if you accomplish it and you kind of notice that when you're talking to people um i don't know if this is something you relate to it's something i noticed a lot in college where you would go around and like ask you know oh what do you want to be like what do you want to do with your degree and people are are so i like how you said vague about what they want to be and what they want to do and I think that's what makes it like a lot of people become complacent is because they have this vague vision of, of oh, I want to be like, you know, I want to work for this company. Mm-hmm. But it's like the the little goals of getting to that big goal are, mm-hmm. are so much more important to know and understand. Like, okay, I got to go and, and study this. I got to... Um, I got to apply to these jobs. I got to work for this job. I got to get this degree. I got to get this skill set. I got to do this, 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 uh, this class. Those little goals to get to the larger one are are, are the most important, way more important, yeah, yeah because they're gonna what end up leading to that long term mm-hmm. goal. Um, and one of the things that I do now thinking about it is I have a calendar in my room mm-hmm. where I'll write my show date and I'll put every single week. I'll write, you know, ten weeks out, nine weeks out, eight weeks out, and then I'll write my weight, and that shows at least I can see now. Okay, my goal weight on show day. 182 pounds where am i at at each point at Mm -hmm. every week out am i getting closer and closer to that goal and that's kind of that's a little short-term thing that isn't that specific but it is kind of okay here are my short-term goals and is that meeting my long-term goal of Mm -hmm. of of being at this weight by this time yeah i mean just going back to what you're saying with tracking your your weight every single day or every Mm -hmm. single week i mean go back to the example of selling a million dollars um i sort of say or we have a, a company dashboard that every single week we fill in many, many different KPIs, probably about 15 different KPIs, key performance indicators, yeah, yeah. something that we could track and something that we could measure on a weekly basis. And then we also have our goals for the year at the top. So it's, mm-hmm. it's very similar. So, so come December 31st, this is what we want to be tracking, or this is what we want to be hitting as a goal, as a, as a goal for a company mm-hmm. over the past 52 weeks. Um, really the season's about 32 to 36 weeks depending on weather but over the course of the entire year this is our goal and then every single week we check in how much more do we have to sell how many leads do we did we bring in how much more marketing do we have to spend how many reviews did we get how much accounts receivable do we have what's our gross profit what's our net profit i mean the list goes on and on and on but that helps you get to that common goal and that all starts with those daily tasks of calling those requests that come in because that'll help you sell the job. That'll help you get that gross profit. It's exactly. it's a it's a compounding effect. I mean, um, there's 
uh, I can't think of it right now. I draw blanks. Uh, my mind just goes. But hey, when you work uh, yeah. your 10-hour days, it's, it's going to happen. No, no, more than that. So far, I've been here 14 hours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're going to be a little, yeah. little spacey after. Uh, but it's, I think, compounding effect, what's it called? Yeah. Or like you take $1, then it turns to 2, then 2 mm. turns to 4, then 4 turns to 8. It's comp- compounding Ex- interest. Exponential. Yes, yep, correct. Yep. So once you get that momentum, that inertia moving forward, then it's going to be like a train trying to stop and growing, yeah growing, so yeah. that this is the hardest point to get that inertia moving forward but then once you sort of get it off the ground and have some things going right for you then you could just not cruise but you could at least um be in a better situation be in a better starting place than you are than you were in the beginning yeah and you're prepared for that like you yeah. know that is coming and you know that's the process and that's what you've seen mm-hmm. and that's why having those conversations and those yeah. w- uh, those meetings with other businesses that have been successful are so important. Same thing with bodybuilding. Having conversations with people that are doing what you want to do is is mm-hmm. one of the best ways you can learn and and strive yeah. to to meet what you want to do because mm-hmm. they've done it. They know the tools mm-hmm. and the resources. They can teach you, and and, and that mm-hmm. information is is probably the most valuable yeah. out of anything. Of course, of yeah. course. Uh, but I, I know we definitely went over a lot of great points here. Uh, but before we wrap up, is there anything else that you want to else that you want to go over? Any other questions that you have for me, um, in terms of really talking about mindset goals? Let me think if there's any that we didn't we didn't cover that's specific. I know it's it's yeah that's that's fine. Because I feel like I, when I go, I try not to look at this, and I just like yeah keep going. Um, See the one, yeah. The one major one that I asked was the whole thing of like when you have to make a hard because I was so as a as a business owner, like making that decision of like oh I have to fire this person or like mm-hmm. I have to, you know, this person isn't going to be happy with what I'm going to do. Dealing with that sometimes can be something that's extremely difficult as a business owner that most people in their regular day life never have to deal with that interaction. Um, maybe at least not at the financial scale that. A business owner does yeah um so that was that was the one thing i was curious about was how do you handle those situations and, and you kind i mean of touched on it just really trying to separate yourself out of the situation mm-hmm. and just make it more about the business yeah because uh, yes it is a very personal decision because you you have to have a personal connection with someone that you are going to fire on at least some type of scale. If, you're, if you don't have a personal connection with someone that you hired in the first yeah. place and you're not being a good boss, but still having that care and passion for them as a person, I, I feel for them. Yeah. I mean, I, there's a gentleman, um, not going to say names by any means, but last year I had to fire him. Um, he started to bawl in front of me, like cry and just uncontrollably crying and being in that situation that's something that I never experienced before I was I felt so awkward I didn't know how to act mm-hmm. but at the same time I knew that if this gentleman continued to stay in the business he would have been doing more harm than good so yeah. if anything I I mean I hate to say it like this but if anything I was helping him out He'll learn from it. Yes, you he, hope. yes, correct. Because he he there were several mistakes that he made, mm-hmm. and they br- brought up and brought up and brought up. And if something doesn't change, I mean, you can't keep rewarding someone for bad behavior. Exactly. Because that's going to end up hurting himself. It could end up physically, mentally, emotionally hurting someone else on the job site, and then it's going to be an entire company thing rather than just a one person thing. So if you can isolate it down to uh, a one person thing. Um, yeah, it, no situation re- revolve, involving HR or firing someone mm-hmm. is ever going to be easy, but it's being able to have, I know we're sounding like, um, repetitive, you're very repetitive, yeah. but having that greater goal, that common goal is something that we always need to keep in mind with every single yeah. person, every single player, Are they helping us achieve that goal. Cause if not, if they don't follow our core values as a business, they're not part then of they're not a part of it. And that's, not everyone is going to be the best fit. Not everyone's going to be the best client for you. Not every single person that you're competing with um, is going to like you. Mm-hmm. But being able to just sort of separate yourself a little bit from it and just do the right thing in that moment um, and have the best interest for the other person, that that's really what it comes down to at the end of the day. And I think 
with as a, it's it's this point similar to to what you just said as a I feel like generationally and societally we've we've kind of are changing whereas the old school mindset was you know you have to work hard to get where you want if you don't work hard enough you're not going to get it and I think generations are changing where a lot of people feel like they're a little bit more entitled to get what what they like Mm -hmm. i don't have to work as hard like i am just going to show up i'm just going to do x y and z and i'm going to get paid for it and i think that's kind of becoming a problem with society is is things are becoming too hand given out which makes people not want to work as hard Mm -hmm. um and i and not to get political (laughs) yeah not to get political but i do think societally you just you see that psychologically is like a lot of people we talk about depression and we talk about um the rates at which people are unhappy and it's like if you don't have a a motivated mindset to like be better and 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 you think you're just going to get what you deserve then i feel like that could kind of lead to what makes you Mm -hmm. not happy with your life because you're not being pushed to good to be good enough and you're not pushed to achieve better than you than you're currently doing um but i just found that that super interesting yeah and also now situationally the other side of things where you have someone who comes to you not wanting, not a firing, but someone who's been working really, really hard, been really great for your business, and now they're like, hey, Marcus, I want more money or else I'm going to go leave for another job. How do you yeah. handle those situations? Um, and maybe they're I even have, harder. The, the, those are because that's really a, a two type of two types of com- or two types of things that I really got to think about. Obviously, one, the financial aspect and the business afford it, which um, that's without finances without the oxygen to the business you can't continue to employ that person exactly. so it's a fine line between um do you pay that person and, and give them a more incentive to work or feel as though that they are more valuable to the business without um possibly having another coworker find out uh so so when it really comes down to trying to keep keep an employee that's doing great as well as pay them more obviously we want to be able to keep great employees because that's the only way to build a business but when it comes down to uh going outside our career progression chart because as a business we have career progression charts for the field and office staff so we have certain requirements that they need to hit in order to get them to certain different points of pay um it would take on more responsibility. So yeah, I don't, I don't have an issue paying you more as long as one, it's it's backed by the work ethic or the quality of work that you bring to the table because it always has to be a mutual relationship. It can never be a one-size story, whether it be for the employer or the employee. It ha- always has to be a mutual benefit. But if you, if you have someone getting paid 60 grand or $20 an hour, but they want to work up to that 60 grand, they're going to have to take on more responsibility. It's going to take time to get them to that point in their life where they could um, reach that financial um, security potentially in some aspects as as well as just be able to give them a path or give them certain key points where they where they could achieve getting to that certain to that certain benchmark of where they want to be in terms of pay so um, you have to set goals for them as well I mean as a employer you have to progress them personally and professionally so nothing, going back to your point about nothing is just handed out, that, yeah, you, you want an extra five bucks an hour? Sure, you, you're a great guy. You show up every single day. That's that's part of it, but it's not the end, end all exactly. be all. You need to, um, they need to understand that there there needs to be a work ethic. There needs to be value brought to the table for both the person, whether it be a dollar figure or some, or saving time as a business owner or being able to help grow a business. Um I don't have an issue giving people more money. I mean, we, we had a one of our gentlemen started off uh, $21 an hour last year. Now he's making 70 grand. Wow. But the amount of responsibility that he took on, he asked for more money, but I said, okay, you want more money? You're going to get the responsibility that we, we see the value in that having a position such as that um, is required, or not required, that we see the value that we want to pay for someone because we, we appreciate all that you do. Mm-hmm. So there's obviously that fine line about having a mutual understanding about what we expect as an employer as well as what we what employees expect out of the employer um, to be treated fair, to hit goals and standards and hit benchmarks and really be able to contribute to a greater goal on both parties' aspects. So 
Yeah. Um, I, I appreciate you bringing that up because it, obviously it's always viewed as one-sided, but it's really trying to change how people view the employer and the employee relationship because everyone wants to, or everyone thinks it's a big bad boss just trying to steal everyone's money and time. But no, at the end of the day, those people, there are great people out there. There are great people that help you contribute to that greater goal, help you build that goal quicker, and then they can be compensated for it. As it, It's all comes down to building more or less an ecosystem of people to create that goal. Um, but I, I appreciate you bringing up that point. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, re- I really do think Jack and I went over some great points today. Uh, just really being able to hit on some key factors about what it took or what it is taking slash took Jack to get to where he is today and his bodybuilding career and, and where he sees that career progressing and what he had to do to overcome some challenges and really be able to uh, get to where he is today. Obviously, it's not his end goal, but it's it's definitely a greater foundational building block with the mindset that he has developed and the work ethic um, to get to where he is today. And, and I really do appreciate him coming on today, sharing some key points about what his journey has led him to be. And hopefully there's some value that you guys listening to this have been able to grab from it. I mean, I personally didn't know some things about Jack until he sat down today um, and really being able to learn and hear from like-minded people such as Jack himself. Um, doesn't always have to be business. It could be other parts of uh, different career paths, different goals in life that really um, you, you could relate with people on. And being in our position, it, it is a little bit of a lonely place at times. So being able to connect with people, whether it be if you're listening to this or have friends or family or neighbors or who, who, who knows what that you can actually relate to, it definitely helps make this journey a little bit easier. But uh, again, Jack, really do appreciate your time coming on here. Um, and anything else you want to wrap up with? No, I think that's it. Thank you for having me on. Yeah. And uh, I think it was a really productive conversation that we both take a lot from. So yeah. I appreciate it. Thank of you. Of course. Of course, Jack. Thank you. And I appreciate you guys tuning into this ep- episode of The Wolf's Den. And uh, we'll see you next episode. Take care. Mm-hmm.